I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is lawyer-turned-award-winning filmmaker Cole Wiley. He's also a screenwriter and the founder of Hey Good Images Productions. Welcome, Cole. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Spencer. So, Cole, you graduated from Harvard Law School in May 2007, and the fall of that same year, you were beginning film school at NYU with no break, <laughs> very little time yeah. off. Yeah. So why go to law school in the first place? Why not just begin your graduate experience at film school? Well, I thought that I was going to be a lawyer. Um, <laughs> you know, actually, when I was coming out in my junior year of undergrad, uh, I was a political science major at Hampton University. And my track at that point was to go to law school, and that's what I've been preparing for. But I had always had, had an interest in pursuing film. Kind of was a little too chicken to do it, and just decided, you know, let me stick to my guns. I've got good grades. I'm going to take the LSAT. I've done, you know, got a pretty good uh, GPA, so let me see if I can get into some of these law schools. So I applied, got into some really great schools, including Harvard, and uh, I went and thought that I was going to be... Was, was there a revelation, a significant event, or even a breakdown that during law school that might have changed the course of your uh, trajectory? Um, well, you know what happened, actually, right before I attended law school, my father passed away. Uh, Ralph Wiley. Ralph Wiley. He was a writer and author. He did some film work, stuff that never ended up actually being produced, unfortunately. Most notably a journalist for ESPN and Sports Illustrated. Exactly. He, most people know him from his sports journalism work, but he did stuff that was really all across the spectrum. And when he passed away, it really affected me in a way that I wasn't anticipating. And How so? Well, it caused me to sit down and actually think about what I wanted out of my life. Okay. And not many people actually take the time to do that. Uh, and when I started doing that, I started thinking about, well, what is it that made you happy or makes you happy? And what are the things that, even as a little child, you know, that, that, that brought you to a place where you felt at home? And that led me to storytelling. I can remember being five years old writing comic books and graphic novels in kindergarten mm -hmm. and decided I was going to do that. And so storytelling is one thing, but to decide that you want to be a filmmaker, how did you come to that decision and, right. how, and when did you come to that decision? Well, I'd always been in love with film uh, ever since I was a little kid. I grew up watching um, George Lucas movies, Spielberg movies, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Karate Kid, that's those type of things. And I just something within me just pushed me in that direction. I knew I didn't want to be a writer per se, just flat out write books and be a journalist or anything like that. I wanted to, to, to bring a visual element to it, and that led me to film. And I ended up shooting a short film during my second year in law school. Wow, talk about multitasking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a bit crazy. I would not recommend anyone <laughs> yeah. do that while they're in their second year of law school. At uh, least you waited until the second year right. because many people, by all accounts, say the first year is the hardest. It was. It was. The first semester was the most difficult for me. Uh, there were points where I was just like, I don't even know if I understand what's in front of me right now. But, you know, you get used to the grind and you, you learn the language. It's almost kind of like you were sitting down to learn Japanese for the first time. At first it's kind of daunting, but then you pick it up and you start working with it and you're okay. Well, and it's also unimaginable to me that you would have that experience. Also, you were very close to your father, so like you said, your father passed away right before. Right. You, so I couldn't imagine just having to deal with all of that the first year of law school and the grief that you must have experienced. It was, it was a bit overwhelming in a, in a certain regard, but I was able to fight through it. Uh, I think the biggest difference in my life was that I realized after my father passed away that he was really my best friend, and he was my confidant. He was the person that I would talk to about probably all the things that I was going through in law school uh, and even dealing with the grief of him passing away. But you can't talk to somebody about their passing when they're the person who's passed. So I really needed a creative release, and I think that most lawyers or former law students would attest to the fact that Law school doesn't really leave much leeway <laughs> for creative freedom. No. So um, I started writing at first just in a journal. Then I started blogging. People started reading that, started getting some attention. And then I decided, well, you know what, let, let me just go ahead and take the leap and just start doing film. Wow, and so you had this realization in law school. And it sounds like it was pretty early on in law school. So right. did you ever think about just quitting and counting your losses? I thought about it briefly, but then I decided against it. I mean, I had such an amazing opportunity to go to Harvard that I didn't want to pass that up just merely because I thought that I wanted to pursue another career path. I decided that I would go ahead and work as a summer associate in a law firm, save up the money that I made there, and go buy the equipment to go make a short film to allow me to apply to graduate film school, which is exactly what I did. Expense, though, of going to both law school and yes. film school, was that a consideration <laughs> or a factor at all? Spencer, uh, why'd you have to bring that up, man? That, that makes me cry at night every day to this day. It's in crushing debt, uh, and unfortunately, I didn't come from a background where 
anybody was paying for school but me, so I had to take out a lot of loans to pay for that. I, I can't tell you what the strategy is behind that. I think it's really just a, a situation where you, you're pursuing your passion and going after what you want to do with your own life. Wow, so Cole, which is more challenging, Harvard Law School or film school at NYU? Oh, that's an easy question. That's the easiest question you've asked me so far. I tell people <laughs> all the time, film school is far harder than law school, now, whether it's at Harvard or anywhere else. Really? Wow. Because you're so invested in your work in an entirely different way for most people. Uh, I think that, that law school, for most people that go, is a very dense intellectual exercise. You're fully immersed in, in legalese, but when you're making a movie, it's, it's your heart, it's your soul, it's your passion, it's your guts, it's everything that you have within you that you're pouring out to get made. It's a physical exercise because you're on set for 12, 16 hours a day, and it's draining. And if you put all of that into your, your product, your, your films, your work, and then find out that it's not that good or have somebody tell, me, tell you that it's, it's just, it's okay, it's, it's a tough thing to battle. But you got to start from somewhere. Nobody's going to walk into film school and make their first movie and be Scorsese. Right. You, you have to learn the craft and learn your own voice, and eventually, hopefully, you'll get there. Well, and speaking of starting somewhere, actually, for preparing for this interview, I reviewed a couple of your short films, and I have to say that quietly, that one was my favorite. It really spoke to me. I thought it was very profound. Was that the film that received, that garnered such praise? Yeah, Quietly was my so most successful short film. Uh, it was my most ambitious short film. Uh, it was the last one that I did at, at NYU. Um, Tell us a, briefly about it. Yeah, it was a big step up. It was, uh, it was about a young boy whose mother is in an abusive relationship, and he's more or less just trying to figure out a way to get her out of that situation. So he goes through these drastic measures to, to save her, in a sense. Um, and, yeah, I shot that in the, see, I think that was the winter of 2008. It went out to the festival circuit that next year and went to, like, a couple dozen film festivals, won some awards. Um, so that was, that was out of the short films that I've made, that is the one that has garnered the most acclaim, like you said. Well, what other projects are you working on currently? Well, right now, my, my primary focus is uh, this feature film called After the Storm. It's about a family in post-Katrina, New Orleans. Uh, their family has been kind of torn apart by uh, Katrina, and they're trying to find the ways to piece their lives back together again. Not a documentary. Not a documentary, because one of the twists in this film is that they have to relive this experience all over again, more or less, because another huge hurricane, bigger than Katrina, bigger than any storm that anybody's ever seen, is heading towards New Orleans again, eight years later. Wow. Kind of was a little bit surreal when Hurricane Isaac started coming and heading towards right. through the Gulf towards New Orleans and people were scared for a bit. It wasn't as strong of a storm as Katrina, but people were still very nervous. And then it ended up missing the city a bit, although it did devastate a lot of areas outside of New Orleans and the nearby parishes. No, so. after the storm sounds pretty interesting. Can't wait until that. It's in theaters. But what do you hope to accomplish as a filmmaker? To tell hopeful, relevant, poignant stories uh, and hopefully to do so with minorities in leads. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's something that people harp on over and over again and have been talking about for decades. You just don't see a lot of those films and you don't see as many as you should. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like really in the early 90s was kind of like a golden era for quote unquote black film in particular where you had all these films like Malcolm X and Boys in the Hood and Do the Right Thing actually came out in 89. But these films were very profound. A lot of people went to see, um, it had a very, uh, far-reaching social impact uh, in, in America and, and abroad. And those types of films, you know, they, they, there's, there's still films being made that might f fit into that uh, pastiche, but they just don't have the effect that they once did, or they're not getting funding from studios or major production companies in the way that they were. And I'm trying to be one of the people that can hopefully work to change that. Okay, well, no, that's an ambitious effort, I have to say. Yeah. Um, well, so do you, and I, I read somewhere that you said you get asked this question all the time, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> do you regret not having practiced law for about a year or two just to experience more of what it's like? No, I don't regret that at all. If there's anything that I, that I would regret in life, it's definitely not that. Um, I feel like I had a pretty good feel for what the practice was that was kind of being laid in front of me. Uh, and a lot of the top you know, law schools, they really kind of push you towards either doing corporate law or doing public interest. 
uh, almost as if there's nothing in between or outside of those things. Uh, I didn't ever really have the incentive to do public interest. I would love doing the work, um, but I had actually worked in government agencies and stuff like that before and kind of felt a little wishy-washy about that. And uh, yeah, the corporate work, it was interesting for sure. But at the end of the day, I more or less felt like I was just kind of facilitating transactions amongst those who are already had means well beyond those that I, <laughs> that I typically know. So I just felt like I needed something a, a little bit that fit my interests a little bit more. Well, so do you use any of the tools that you learned in law school in the filmmaking process? Absolutely. Uh, just the critical thinking from the first step, um, just in the real world from the, from the business perspective. And then in doing contracts or looking reviewing contracts, I don't necessarily have to send something out to a lawyer right away. I can kind of look at something first, kind of get gauge where things lay and where they need to be amended, and then maybe send it off to a lawyer. Um, and then the network as well. You know, I have a lot of classmates that are working in all kinds of fields just now, and I constantly get in touch with people I didn't even know were working in, in, in the entertainment business in one way, realm or another, and they are. They're okay. out here. So. Well, we're, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. We're going to stay tuned, keep an eye out for After the Storm, but we appreciate you talking to us about your journey today. Thank you. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.